thank you, Leader, for, for the statement. I just have a question on the remarks Leader made about the video uh, that was uh, circulated on or around, I think it was 7th July, she mentioned, uh, and that it was uh, some modified audibly to hear what uh, former Speaker Tan Chuan Jin, the expletive former Speaker Tan Chuan Jin, uttered. Would the leader be minded to refer that matter to the police to investigate, to inquire who released that video? Because as leader said, I don't believe anybody in this house picked up that language. Leader of the house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, with regard to the question by the leader of the opposition, I think it was asking if I ref minded to refer to the police. One refers to the police matters which are offences, because police obviously investigates offences. I have not considered, but I'm not entirely sure that making something louder is an offence. Because if the words were said, which I believe Mr Tan has admitted, the only difference is that on the live stream, it could not be heard. But if the words were actually said, and what the person has done is to make it louder, then you can't deny that the words were said. And I'm not sure that amplification per se is an offence, because if that were the case, then many <coughs> videos that are put out by many people would be an offence. So, so I, I have to say, I had not occurred to me because I was not sure that an offence has, has been discussed. Mr. Pritam Singh. I note the leader's comments on the matter. I think the question here is the duration of time that it took for that uh, video to become public. Uh, I'm not sure whether the leader considers there to be something suspicious about that. There's also the matter of uh, what we came to know later of a long-running uh, affair between speaker and another MP, whether in total there are circumstances which the authorities should actually look into. Leader of the House. Well, as I've said, one refers matters which are offences. So coming back to the first one on this particular hot mic video, again, um, if something is released subsequently, I don't know that releasing something subsequently which really did happen constitutes an offence. I mean, if somebody considers that it does, there's nothing to prevent that person from referring it to the police. But at the moment, as matters stand, it is not immediately apparent to me which offence has been disclosed. Perhaps Mr Singh could clarify what offence uh, he has in mind. Mr Singh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was not referring to the offence. In my second clarification, I believe I referred to the total circumstances of the timing of this video coming out. It's not the offence per se. I mean, the police investigates a number of matters. Uh, before it can even conclude, sometimes an offence is disclosed. I'm just asking, in the, in the case of the personality involved, the Speaker of the House, a very senior member of government, whether there would be some thought placed on the circumstances of how that video came to be circulated in public. I wasn't speaking of a specific disclosure of an offence, but the total circumstances that query whether there could be something more to it. I have had uh, some individuals come up to me questioning whether there is a false flag in this. Uh, all sorts of issues have come up in so far as the public can be concerned. So it's a matter that I'm raising to the leader for her consideration. Leader of the House. Actually, I think Mr. Singh is aware that one only refers matters for investigation by the police uh, if an offence has been committed. Um, the police do not generally investigate things which are not offences. So I, I still struggle um, with what exactly uh, one is to ask them to investigate because release of timing in, 
at a later stage is not per se an offence. So maybe I can just close this matter, uh, or, or this, the answer to this question, by saying that if a an offence is disclosed, if there is credible material uh, on which to uh, refer mat the matters to the police, then of course one should do so. At the moment, it is not apparent to me that there is an offence, but should such matter, should something further come up which indicates that an offence may have occurred, then the matter can be reconsidered at that time. Ms. Lim. Thank you, Speaker. I have a clarification for the leader uh, on what she um, explained to us earlier. Um, she said that um, she communicated with the former Speaker, Mr Tan, uh, on her view that uh, whatever he expressed that was um, caught on the hot mic um, deserved a formal apology uh, in the House and he has um, duly given it. Uh, I'd like her to clarify whether, in doing so, she was purporting to exercise any authority on the matter as the leader, because um, he was the Speaker of the House at the time, and we do understand that the Speaker is the master of the chamber. He has the power to punish us, but it's a question mark as to who has the power to punish him if there is any unparliamentary conduct. Uh, and from the research brief research that I've done in other countries, when such a thing were to happen, uh, it's backbenchers uh, filing a motion of regret that is the usual thing done. So I'd like to ask leader, in her communication with Mr Tan to extract that apology, is she purporting to exercise authority over him or is using her powers of persuasion? Leader of the House. I thank the member for her question. The answer is no. I was not exercising any authority over him. What uh, I wanted to do was to indicate to him that in my view as leader, at the very minimum, an apology, a withdrawal of the comment and an apology should be required, which is why I was at some pains uh, earlier on in my statement to say that it was my view that the specific matter uh, did not require further action, but I'm not saying that I have the power to conclude it. If any member thinks otherwise or wishes to do otherwise, it is open to another member to do so. And I was not, in fact, seeking a ruling either. So it was a statement that this was my view. Mr. Leong Manwai. Uh, 